back grade 9 science students. We are now on our lesson still living things under environment unit 1. Part 3 of this lesson about explaining the different non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. But in part 3, we will discuss more on sex chromosomes and sex inher link inheritance. In this uh, part, we are going to discuss more on about this thing called traits or our in unique individual characteristics. But before that, let us first screenshot copy the important words and their meanings. And because we will discuss more on about uh, traits, we are going to find first, uh, determine first what are the example of traits. Okay, there are traits called giantism and dwarfism. A very tall person, a very short person. We have also a trait for big eyes and a trait for small eyes. We have also a, a trait that a person could have the second toe is longer than the big toe. And there is also a trait that a person could have the big toe as the longest compared to the second toe. There is also a trait called extra fingers. A person could have extra fingers, but there is also a trait that a person could have a normal five fingers. There is also a trait that a person could have a very uh, thin lips. There is also a trait that a person could have thick lips. But there is a trait that can be inherited frequently. We frequently inherit this kind of trait. And this trait is called sex, being male and female. This trait is uh, frequently inherited. And like this trait here, we rarely can have this uh, trait that has extra fingers. In our community, I can only, one, I, I can only see one person among thousands of us that has these extra fingers okay but being male and female is frequently inherited okay frequently inherited how to determine if it is a male or a female it will be based on the chromosomes if it is two x chromosomes it is female and if it is x and y chromosome it is male please see to it that uh, x is bigger compared to y because x is bigger compared to this one this little chromosome here is the y Chromosome. Now, to determine the gender of every offspring, we need to determine it using the Punnett square here. First, we are going to write the genotype of every parent in this section here. So, I'm going to write here the symbol for the father or the male and the symbol for the female with this one. Okay. Now, let's proceed to writing the genotype of every parent in this area. I'm going to write the genotype of father which is X and Y or the X chromosome and Y chromosome because we are going to determine the sex so or the gender so it is for uh, finding it in the sex chromosome so we have here X chromosome and Y chromosome or X is sperm cell and Y is sperm cell now for our mother we have only two sex chromosomes okay now this area here is for our offspring the first offspring will will have this chromosome X X if the X or sperm cell fertilize the egg cell of our mother okay the result is female offspring two X chromosome but if this chromosome fertilizes this egg the resulting individual has the XY chromosome or male then same with this one X X because of these chromosomes here and xy because of this y sperm cell and x egg cell okay it means that there is a chance of 50 percent having a male offspring and there is a chance of having 50 percent of having female offspring okay that is how you are going to identify the or determine the sex of every offspring now this is our human karyotype please remember that uh <coughs> We humans has 46 chromosomes because 23 of it <coughs> is coming from our mother and another 23 from our father a total of 46 so it means we we have 23 pairs of chromosome but the 23rd pair is or are the sex chromosome right <coughs> the sex chromosome in this example it is 
a male because it contains X and Y chromosomes. So, so, so much for that. We are now going to understand or identify the six link inheritance. It is called six link inheritance because it is inherited from the sex chromosomes of our parents here, from the 23rd pair or the twin sex chromosome. Now, we have three kinds of six link inheritance. We have six link, six limited traits, six influence traits, and six link traits. Now, we are going to discuss first about six limited traits. Six limited traits is about those traits that is limited only in one gender. For example, if this gender here has these traits, the, the, the other gender is contains nothing of this trait. It means zero. If this trait is present in this gender, then this, gen, this trait must, be, must not be present in the other gender. Example is lactation in cows. Okay? Lactation is when uh, is producing of milk from cows. Okay? Lactation in cows, meaning producing of milk. Now, there is female cow and male cow. Now, let's check about the uh, allele for lactation. It is letter L for lactation and non-lactation is more letter L. Okay? For the female, the first female cow, we have this genotype XX because it is a female and the genes LL. So, uh, meaning to say, it is female lactating. Right? But, you will, be, you will be surprised because if we check the male genotype here, we have also XY because fem, uh, it is male and it contains also the same alleles. Big letter L, big letter L. Two big letter L here, female lactating. While in male, even though it has the same with the allele of female, it is male non-lactating. So even though they have the same genotype, it appears that uh, it is the trait is only limited to one gender. It is limited only in female. They have the same genotypes, but only female has this trait called lactation. Okay, that is how we had understood about six limited traits. It is only limited to the uh, from li limited to one gender only. Okay, limited to one gender only. Another example is this. The second one here. Um, it is XX, big L, small L. The result is lactating. But in male, XY, big L, small L, not lactating. See? The same genotype but different in their expression. Male did not express lactation but female express lactation okay next here we have sex link traits example is hemophilia Hem hemophilia is a kind of disorder in which uh, blood clots slow is very slow no blood clots is very slow or does not clot at, at all this is very dangerous another example of sex link traits is colorblind now we have two objects here if you can s notice numbers then you are not colorblind but if you cannot see numbers in in this picture then you are a color blind now colorblind is represented by c now please remember that uh six influence uh six limited traits are the traits that is limited only to one gender but six linked traits is different because it is a kind of trait in which it is expressed differently again by gender because sex link traits are dominant in other gender while it is also recessive in the other gender how is that possible okay we will look at the genotype of different offsprings here now we will find a colorblind female yes this is this is the colorblind female and check his, her genotype we have here XX, then it contains two let, letter C here. So, the, this female is colorblind because both chromosomes contains the allele for colorblind. Now, let's check the colorblind male. This is the colorblind male, and this is his genotype XCY. 
Now, can you spot the difference here? In order for a female to become colorblind, she must have the two alleles in her chromosome. But in order for a male to become colorblind, he needs only one allele C to become colorblind, which means being colorblind is dominant in male and being colorblind is recessive in female because in this example number two, only one X contains letter C or the allele for colorblind. So the allele for, the allele for colorblind is not expressed because this individual is normal. Meaning to say, it is recessive in female and it is dominant in male. It needs only one allele to be, to be expressed in male, but it needs to be two. It needs to have two alleles, homozygous C, to become colorblind female. Okay? So, uh, sex line traits are traits that is different in every gender. It is dominant in other gender while it is recessive in other gender. Now, let's proceed to sex influence traits. The sample is baldness, loss of hair, okay? Sex influence traits is different because sex influence traits are those traits that uh, that is present, huh? That is present in male and female, but it is more frequent in the other gender. Again, it is present in male and female, but it is frequent, it is uh, present in large amount in the other gender. Example, baldness, okay? As you can see in the picture here in, in, this, uh, in this table, here for the male, X, Y, big letter B, big letter B, which means for baldness, represent baldness, big letter B, because small B is non-bald. Big letter B is baldness or dominant. So, the... The first genotype is this, so meaning it is ba male bald or male bald or this male is bald. Now, in female, we have here XX, BB, so this means this female is bald also. Okay, the same, but you will be surprised in uh, genotype number two. Here, big B, small b, big me, small b, so XY, big B, small b. Here, XX, female, big B, small b. They have the same genotype, but how they express this? The, the, in male, it is bald, but in female, it is non-bald. Okay, can you spot the difference now? Although, some females are bald, but baldness is very common in male. In the sense that, in the second genotype reveals this because in male we have small b big b and in female also small b and big b but in male it is already bald but in female it is non-bald so that is how you understand sex influence traits two two genders contains the trait but it is more on the other gender in this case baldness is present in male and female but it is more present in male okay that is how you get sex influence traits. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learn from this video. And before I end this video, I need to mention first this website. Thank you for this website for the meanings of these important words. And also for these links here. Thank you for these links where I obtain those pictures. Important pictures I use in this video. So see you in part 4 of this video, of this lesson. And have a nice day.